You know, I was just listening on my YouTube playlist of 90s rock and hearing bands like Space Hog and Danzig and the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones, right? And I was thinking, like, as Pittsburgh Kevin might say, where are James Gay? <laughs> I mean, where are these bands that were, like, really huge? They had giant hits, and then they, they just disappeared. They fell off the face of the earth. So uh, on this week's Ludini Rock and Roll Circus podcast, we're going to tell you all about 10 bands from the 90s that seem to just vanish. Get ready to rock out with your talk out. It's the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. All right, everybody, moms and dads, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. My name is Ludini, a.k.a. Lou Lombardi. Uh, see, I switched it up on you. Oh, oh no, um, you did uh, you, you did. <laughs> oh, boy, here we go. And uh, this is my merry band of cohorts here at the circus, where we bring you great music, talk, and comedy every week. Found all over the planet on iTunes, Spotify, and wherever great podcast listening can be found. Please check us out on the web at Ludini Rock and Roll Circus dot com. And if you would like access to some uh, exclusive material, videos, music, things like that that you can't get anyplace else, you want to go to my website, Lou Lombardi Music dot com. There's all kind of cool downloads and all kind of fun stuff there. So please check us out. Uh, we are also uh, in um cahoots if you will with this little thing called rock rage radio and you can find out more about that at rockrageradio.com download the app you can listen to great music programming 24 7 including this show as well as hot licks with lily six on thursday nights at what time lily 6 p.m at eastern time 6 p.m eastern time and uh i do want to mention our sponsor Wolf's Customs. You want to go to wolfscustoms.online and let me tell you why you might want to do that. If you're a guitar player, bassist, drummer, uh, you play any kind of musical instrument and you're looking for something that's going to like make you stand out a little bit in terms of how the guitar looks, how it, you know, how the audience perceives it, then uh, Chris Thunderwolf Dotson at wolfscustoms.online is definitely a uh, where you want to go because they do these amazing custom finishes on musical instruments, hollow flash. They do the, uh, like the engraving, they do all kind of really cool stuff. A lot of great photos in there. You can check it all out there at uh, wolfscustoms dot online. So we have a uh, show for you guys today. We're going to be getting into this, uh, another one of these sort of where are I called where at <laughs> just to mix it up, um, for our Pittsburgh friends. But, uh, Another one of these shows on bands that like seem to have vanished or we haven't heard from in a long time, trying to sort of try to catch up and see uh, what they might be up to if they are up to anything. So we're going to get into that here in a second. But um, first, I just want to say that I saw the Black Crows. Yes, the Black Crows Ooh. last Wednesday at the uh, wonderful Star Lake Amphitheater in uh, sunny Burgettstown, Pennsylvania. It's a suburb of Pittsburgh. Um, and uh, the show was absolutely amazing we grew we had it was it was a human night of course but the but you know no rain nothing like that um the drinks were good the company was great the bands were absolutely freaking amazing the black crows i you know after we got out i came home and put on a couple of black crows records and like we were like he sounds exactly the same <laughs> he sounds exactly the same so like a lot of these guys whose voices changed or whatever, or maybe, you know, really struggling, the, Chris Robinson is not one of them. So if you get a chance to check the Crows out uh, on their tour, uh, it's it's a really, really good show. They're in, they're like in top form. They they sound as, as good uh, as ever. They sound absolutely fantastic. And a shout out to Dirty Honey as well, uh, the opening act. Good Led Zeppelin style um, 
you know, newer band. So you want to check those guys out as well. Um, so that was my big uh, adventure. And yeah, there, so Casey Casey. So <laughs> yeah, what's going on over there? <laughs> so what? Uh, Lou okay. So what do you guys? I'm trying to. Um, <laughs> Be um, professional or something? Come yes. On. What I'm trying it's to do is I'm going. I'm going to be at Rock and Pod this oh. weekend. Oh. You know, and you know, I'm, I'm trying to like you know up my you know my game a little bit. Mm-hmm. Instead of talking a million miles a minute, shouting, going, oh my god! <laughs> but we better. like you like that. <laughs> and we're used to you. Like so that. I'm trying to be a little bit more professional, especially during the announcements portion. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, the people that understand all the announcements and, and, and they hear. I think sometimes I don't not doing any of these folks any good because I'm speaking so fast that nobody even knows what the hell I'm talking about when I talk about Rock Rage Radio or Wolf's Customs, or whatever. So wow. I was trying to be a little bit better at that. Yeah, yeah. That is all. So Lily, wow. what is going on with you? You did some fun stuff. I went on vacation over the weekend. Woo! Uh, nobody really seemed to bother me too much, which was great. But I went to Cedar Point in Ohio. And I also went to a train museum, which was very interesting. Uh, met with uh, one of the bands that I hosted on one of my shows for Lily Six's Live Saturdays. It's Guy Snowden and the Citizens. He's a British singer, singer-songwriter um, out of Cleveland. And he um, let me preview his new album. So, wow. Look at you being yes. all special. With his lovely wife and child there making me mud pies. Nice mud pies. <laughs> Sadie mud pie. made me a mud pie. Mm. Sadie made me a mud pie. There's that's a blues that's a song. song. Yeah. yeah, Sadie <laughs> made me a mud pie. <laughs> but yes, they were uh, very cool. And people. I loved. Oh, it and we day. tried out the new haunted house restaurant in what? Cleveland. What you was did? Super fun. Not. I did that. It was delicious. I call shenanigans on your happy ass. Mm. Pictures on Facebook. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, Facebook is the proof, right? Yes. Right. Wait a minute. Pictures you might get. You, I, I, I think they should send the fact checkers in on you. Mm-hmm. Good. <laughs> I had a dinner called Slimer. Uh, I, can, I can only imagine what it looked like. It was green waffles uh, oh. with egg, sausage, mm-hmm. and maple syrup, and coated in powdered sugar. It was delicious. Hmm. I had a Slimer after dinner. I'll bet you did. <laughs> you don't know what that is? You can let oh. your imaginations uh, sort of just go with that. Yeah. So... Let's get into it, guys. We don't have any. Uh, I'm, I've been stalling for the past, you know, nine minutes. So, because <laughs> so. you're talking you're so slow. Hi, yes, everybody. Welcome to the Ludini Rock and Roll. Yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into today's topic, Lily. We so you start with you. Ladies this first. gives Kevin and I to, a chance to finish our homework while you're talking. Oh, you mean how and I didn't do mine correct at all? Ah, uh, you're good. We said, listen, listen. Okay, so we <laughs> miscommunicated for a second, and I said '90s bands. Well, you might hear a couple bands that aren't from the '90s. No, so you're gonna be okay. you're gonna be fine. We're good. You're all just gonna you know it's gonna be so good, and when it's done, you're gonna be like, wow. He was right. It was so good. (laughs) So go ahead. Anyway, uh, I'm going to talk about a band that I've been obsessed with for the past few weeks. Made you play them on the after our personal after show upstairs on the loft there. But White Trash, a funk hard rock soul band from Queens, New York. Uh, They separate themselves from other bands in their genre with their horn section called the Badass Brass, which gave them a very funky musical sound. They enjoyed some success in the early 90s before disbanding. Uh, White Trash was heavily influenced by Blood, Sweat, and Tears and the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones yeah, with the horn that. section. Yeah, cool. um, Dave Alvin uh, and brothers Ethan and Aaron Collins formed band in 1985, but they did not uh, get discovered until 1990, and they were signed to EMI Music Publishing. Um, then uh, signed to Elektra Records in 1991 and released their self-titled debut album that same year. Um, very successful album, fueled by the video for Apple Pie which is their most popular song, which was uh, in heavy rotation on MTV's Buzzbin. The song reached number 30. Buzzbin. 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 (laughs) The song reached number 39 on the Billboard's Hot Mainstream Rock Tracks chart, while the album charted to number 122 on the Billboard 200. Despite this, they they decided to split up because the Collins Brothers and Carl Dorella was not happy with the musical direction the band was, where the band was headed, uh, while the band was on hiatus, the other single from their album, The Crawl, was used as M- the theme song for MTV's, um, hold on, The John Stewart Show, 1993. Oh, cool. Um, Alvin, Dave Alvin, continued White, uh, white Trash with an entire new, entirely new lineup in 1994. Um, it did not feature as much brass as on their debut album, and it did not do as well as their first release. Um, white Trash disbanded 
until 2007 when the original lineup got back together for a reunion show at the Crazy Donkey in Long Island. I actually know exactly where that's at. Uh, the reaction was so good that the band reformed and played several more shows. In 2008, Dave and Aaron decided to write new material and get everyone back in the studio to record a brand new album. In March 2009, White Trash released 3D Monkeys in Space through Gotham Gold Music. Wow, <laughs> Gets 3D back. Monkeys in Space. <laughs> the band was touring again until the unexpected death of, uh, of a heart attack of guitarist Ethan Collins in December Aww. 2016. Uh, in 2015, they released uh, Suburban Purgatory. And their top singles were Apple Pie, Poe White Trash, The Crawl, Minor Happiness, and Pig. Recently, they opened their vault and pulled uh, some of the old CDs out, the out of print CDs, posters, T-shirts, that sort of thing, and do have limited quantities. And they are touring right now. Huh. Um, small cities right now. Hopefully, they. I'm sorry. Them. Who's who's replaced the guitar player? Do you have it? I don't think I. Oh, you don't have that name down. I'm just that. curious if it was like somebody from you know, because very often like. Like what? Who? What? Chester Bennington sang for what? Stone Temple Pilots for a little while, for or a hot second. Yeah. So, like a lot of these bands, it's not from mm. certain eras. Will kind of players would yeah, the, the yeah. '80s too. A lot of bands mm -hmm. jumped to mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Remember, Rudy Sarzo was like the bass player in everybody's band for yeah. like you know. Yeah. Yeah. Vivian you know, Campbell years. jumped into Def Leppard. Yeah. Yeah. So. But Dave uh, Alvin is very active on Facebook. He will even talk to you if you ask questions. He'll get you the CDs, posters, what have you. Wow. And hopefully they come to Pittsburgh because I would love to see them. <laughs> And this is not to be this. This isn't the same Dave Alvin that's Alvin and the Chipmunks. No. Correct? Okay. I'm just to <laughs> no. Okay, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not Bagdasarian. <laughs> I still want a motorboat. That isn't the words. You want a motorboat? I'm burning that record when I get back to the house. <laughs> The Elvin and Chipmunks oh, one? No. The Christmas one, specifically. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> smoke tonight. Okay. All right. It's Christmas in August oh, here at the Ludini Lord. Rock and Roll Circus. Oh, Sorry, God. <laughs> uh, Mr. O'Connor. Yeah. What's so up, a, Pittsburgh Kevin? What's up? Hey, uh, hey, Yins, guys. Here's the difference between Lily and I. Lily does, she puts so much thought and research into shit. You I know? like to know things. You, you, you're really <laughs> good at it. And so here's me. Uh, so the whole thing that got this started, Lou, was I was listening to uh, Spotify the other day or a little rotation. Thing Spotify. Going on, and my own worst enemy came up. Mm. Now, I didn't have my phone right in front of me. And I'm like, ah, oh, Blink-182. Oh, the song. The song, I thought yeah. you said like your actual no, your own enemy. No, it wasn't my own oh. worst enemy. Yeah. I, Actually showed up on <clears> YouTube. They've wow. disappeared. Wow. They're, they're gone. <laughs> so anyway. But um, <laughs> I literally thought that's what you were yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, where's so, Kevin like, going with this? So my first thought was like, oh, Blink, Blink One Eighty Two. No, no, that was the uh, it was the band Lit. Remember Lit? Yes. Yeah. So here's the difference between Lily and I. Uh, Lit was <laughs> formed in 1988, and then they broke up. Oh. No, no, that's, that I'm sucks. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so Lit was formed in 1988, Orange County. Uh, they've released six studio albums, uh, best known, of course, for My Own Worst Enemy. Um, unfortunately, the band has had some tragedy. Uh, let's see here. February 20th, 2003, Derek Johnson vocals died. Get this. Died at the nightclub fire at the station while attending the Great White That concert. sucks. Yeah. You believe that? <laughs> wow. Like, so the guy from. Schneid. Yeah, the guy from Lit. Dies. The it's, a, it's a white. At it's the, a white. Yeah. Stripes. Yeah. And his name not the white, white, stripes. white snake. Not the white not white snake. <laughs> great white. The not great white snake. The great white snake. <laughs> the great white snake tiger. If the great <laughs> white striped snake. Tiger. Like, oh, there's tiger. a band. And he's like, from the band can, Lit. Yeah. Oh, Lily. What Lily, too soon. No, it's not. Too soon, Lily. It's definitely not too but, soon. But uh, yeah, so they got that going against them. August 13th, 2008, their drummer, Alan Schellenberger, died from a brain tumor. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh, right? So this is really horrible. Um, but these motor scooters are still at it. But Lou, Lou, they're still Those at it. Those motor scooters are still at it. Those motor scooters are. Now, oh, that's the, crazy, now, Kevin. The thing is. That's um, crazy. I'm not, Lou, I'm serious, Kay. Look, look at me. Lou, see, see my eye? I'm serious. There you go. <laughs> But uh, these guys are still going at it. Uh, their style have, shi have shifted to more of a country-influenced sound. Truth. And they... <laughs> truth? You'll lit truth. <laughs> um, and they released their sixth album, These Are The Days, uh, December 15th. These hey, are the days! I watch you. 
Those of you watching just at home. So you were saying I was too it's mellow. Just I was just getting warmed up a little Lily's bit. Face. I'm still trying to speak slower and more clearly, but yes, I, I can't. I can't let my crazy side just you know yes. wh- wither on the vine. Yeah, I mean, that's why you guys pay me the big bucks. <laughs> big oh, bucks. Yes, that's it. <laughs> But yeah, they released their last album uh, December of 2017. So they're still at it. They do still tour. Uh, they mm-hmm. actually just were on tour somewhere in New York. Ooh. Very cool, guys. They do and small shows. That, yeah. And are they kind of a one hit wonder or kind of? Yeah. I really can't think of they, they listed a couple other of their songs online, and I'm like, I really don't know. You'd those. have to be a lit fan to know a lot of these. Yeah, man, I'm a lit fan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll bet you are. All the jokes can keep yeah, going. Yes, 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 yes. Like you could just keep going with those jokes <laughs> forever and ever. All kind of lit jokes. This <laughs> next band, you can't make. No jokes about the name. Well, the name is I a can. kind of, Yeah, we could make a I'm joke sure about the can. name. But this is a band that Lily mentioned in hers, and this is the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. Yeah. Uh, roots lie in the hardcore punk scene of the early 80s. Uh, strong influence from uh, a British uh, two-tone ska. Um, the bass player Joe uh, Gittleman played uh, local hardcore uh, with uh, uh, called G- Gang Green, excuse me, while vocalist Dickie Barrett was a member of Impact Unit. Uh, and then finally, the Cheap Stakes, uh, Cheap Stakes, excuse me. Uh, they uh, went through a bunch of different changes and stuff like that. Eventually, what happened was these bands that were floating around, they sort of all bonded, each different members bonded with each other over different songs and different music that they liked. And um, <clears throat> the band eventually coalesced into um, the, the the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. Uh, made their uh, record, record debut when they were featured uh, on the mashup ska compilations. Uh, they uh, Their song was The Cave and then Ugly, which of these are just early recordings were sort of on these, uh, uh, you know, when people would do like a collection of like, you know, like new surf mm-hmm, or mm-hmm. something like that, you know, these like, uh, you know, different acapella CDs or different things like that. that were out, they were floating around at this time and they were getting featured on some of these things. Um, <clears throat> they didn't consistently, uh, draw, uh, you know, large crowds at the shows, but the Tang record label, um, gave them a recording contract, which result in the devil's night out album. Uh, the album was released to positive local and lukewarm national reaction during a time when ska was struggling to move out of the American underground. I mean, there aren't a lot, there was some ska that made it on the radio, but very sort of pop, right. You know, mm-hmm. type type stuff, and these guys were playing a little sort of more of a uh, uh, traditional kind of version of that music. Um, so, and it was just, um, <laughs> it was during this time that uh, Dickie Barrett began wearing this this plaid clothing. They all sort of adopted this this kind of crazy look with all these plaid. Uh, things, but their mainstream success came in the nineties, uh, ninety three to two thousand one. The band signed their first uh, major label when they joined Mercury, and um, uh, the the first release was like an EP with some cover songs on it, um, and. Uh, they finally started putting out more and more albums on Mercury and getting more and more and more support. Um, Tony Platt produced the third album, Don't Know How to Party, and contained a cover of Stiff Little Fingers, a song by Tim Soldiers. And uh, some different folks uh, uh, came in, like the guy from Bad Brains came in and sang on a song. Um, The band would also appear in the 94 uh, Kiss My Ass tribute uh, Kiss. I remember when that was a thing. Wow. When they were when they yeah, were tribute, there were tribute albums. albums. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Stu and I were talking about that the other day. But I remember now they did a cover of cover of Detroit Rock City. I have a t shirt because that ba ba da 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 mm-hmm. it was done with, mm-hmm. with, with horns. Oh, that's cool. It was uh yeah. very cool. Um so they were they're from Boston, obviously, and they were eventually invited by sev- fellow Bostonian Steven Tyler, Lily, you know who that is, right? To open up for uh, Aerosmith uh, on a New Year's Eve concert in Boston. So you know Aerosmith is reaching reaching out to them, and uh, you know they went on again to have you know some uh, big success in the nineties. Um, they went on a bit of a hiatus in the early two thousands. And uh, they did eventually reunite in 2007 and have sort of been out there kind of playing the hits. Um, You know, with these classic bands, it's unfortunate. You know, they may put out an awesome album, but it's really not going to get 
the kind of attention we would want it to have. Um, that's just not the climate. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, it's just not what was happening. So, um, but they, they're still out there. They're still putting out great music and um, they, they have a relationship with the, with the Jimmy Kimmel and um, they have been on, they have been on his show. And uh, so there's some, uh, so they got, they're in good company in terms of having that, uh, you know, Steven Tyler, this guy, and that oh, guy, yeah. guys from other bands really respecting them and wanting to work with them. But uh, the mighty, mighty boss tones, um, you know, with the past year, with everything that happened, um, you know, probably just now getting back to it. But uh, I would, I would definitely uh, keep your uh, eyes and ears open for a uh, for them to be out on tour. Nice. Okay. Legit. So they are still out there, even though you don't know about that. That's the thing too. Sometimes we discover that. What, what band were we talking about? You said, "Oh, they never left. They've been still touring." Yeah, and I was still, like, "But a, I didn't know." That's a lot of <laughs> a lot of people. A lot of people wouldn't know. Candlebox. So. Yeah, yeah. 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 probably. They're still just about. going, and you just don't even realize it. Um, <laughs> that's what we're doing here. So, uh, Lily, what do you got next? Um, I'm going to talk about the band Thunder. Do you remember that band? Yes. I don't need your dirty love. Yes, that's mm-hmm. one of the songs. I don't want you <laughs> touching me. They were actually formed in 1989 in London, but they did not release their first record until 1990, which was Backstreet Symphony, and that's the one yep. that has Dirty Love, all the good songs actually. Um, that one charted uh, number 21 on the UK album charts and number 114 on the US Billboard chart. Uh, the 1992 follow-up, Laughing on Judgment Day, reached number two. While both albums were certified gold by British phonographic industry, I almost said pornographic, all nine oh singles released from the two albums reached the UK singles chart top 40. So all of their songs that they released, all the nine singles, were in the top 40. 40 charts. Um, after a brief hiatus, Thunder returned in 2002 and formed their own record label, STC Recordings. The band's sixth studio album, Shooting at the Sun, was released the following year, supported by the UK Top uh, 50 single, Loser. After three more studio albums, 2005's The Magnificent Seventh, 2006's Robert Johnson Tombstone, and 2008's Bang, Thunder decided to break up in 2009. Um, Two years later, however, the group returned for a third active spell, scheduling several sporadic live shows over the following years. Um, a tenth studio album, Wonder Days, was released uh, on the Ear Music label in 2015. I had no idea they had this many albums, by the way. Um, giving um, the band their first UK top ten since 1995 when it peaked to number nine. Um, in October 2018, the band announced a new album with UK tour dates scheduled for February. Uh, Please Remain Seated was released through the new label on BMG in 2019 with 12 radically reworked recordings of songs from their 30-year career and has been described as a more quiet album taking in influences from rock, blues, country, jazz, and soul. Hmm. Their most popular songs are Love Walked In. Do you know that one? Hmm. You you would know it if you heard it. Okay. Um, And Dirty Love, both of Of which are on the first album, Backstreet Symphony. Um, The album Backstreet Symphony has been greeted with critical rapture, calling it one of the all-time great hard rock debuts. uh, Described the album sound as a mixture of a bad company and a deep purple Hmm. combination, uh, claiming that... Uh, while, while Thunder weren't the most original or groundbreaking band, groundbreaking band in the world, uh, they weren't lacking when it came to spirit and enthusiasm. Uh, let's see anything else? That's it. I don't know that they are still touring, but that'd be freaking awesome if they did because I would really love to see them. But I listen. I quite often listen to uh, Love Walked In. It's kind of like very stadium rock sort of oriented. And uh, yeah, that'd be great. Time. I uh, went back like because I I remembered. Um... That uh, I remember Thunder coming out and uh, and the first album and my buddy Sam Gabud he was a drummer and we were in a band together and he was really hot on those guys and we learned we did cover Dirty Love in the band. It's a great song. yeah. Um, <laughs> but what and, and I'm not sure um, if you this you there if you know this or how, how many of their albums you listen to but they changed their sound. And um, they have they later on have more of a kind of R and B kind of kind of thing kind mm-hmm. of thing going on, and that music is very very good too. I was um, I did one of those things that you do, like when the streaming services started <clears> to come <throat> on, mm-hmm. and I think it was probably Mog um, or one of those might have been might have been. Um, Rhapsody or one of them and I was like what have happened to Thun- Thunder yeah I like that band <laughs> and I searched Boom. it yeah. and um, I I of course I listened to Dirty Love and then you know how they'll put in the other songs and like these kind of like rocked up kind of R&B kind of thing with you know female background vocals and stuff mm-hmm. we started playing I was like 
these are really good jams too. Like yeah. they were, they fit well in that. You know, I'm a little part more partial to their earlier stuff only because that's what I remember. But I had to give give them their due on that. And they yeah, did just yeah. uh, do one last album this year, All the Right Noises. Hmm. This year. So they're going to keep that's going. That's a good name, All the Right Noises. <laughs> and I really, really want you to tour in the U.S., please. Right. <laughs> please tour in the U.S. Please. Lily needs to see you. Lily needs to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, we are going to jump over to, uh, before we jump over to Kevin, I want to give a shout out one more time to Wolf's Customs, wolfscustoms.online. Check them out. Get the custom finish done on your musical instrument of your choice. Rockrageradio.com. Download the app as well as go to Ludini Rock and Roll Circus.com uh, for all kind of Ludini goodness. Uh, and uh, don't forget to uh, sign up and uh, become a part of our exclusive community at LuLombardiMusic.com. Um, Kevin, oh, you got another one? Yeah. Okay. All right. So <laughs> I like uh, it. My next entry uh, Third Eye Blind. That entry. Third, third Eye Blind, formed in San Francisco, 1993. Then they broke up. All right, Lily. No, no I'm just messing with you. And there it is. <laughs> I always wondered about the significance of their name. I wonder what they were getting at with that name. Uh, what? Mm. <clears throat> All right, we're getting sued by MTV. No, just Mike Judge. <laughs> Bobby? Anyway, so Third Eye Blind, formed in San Francisco, 1993. Signed with Electra Records in 1996, and uh, they released their self-titled album in 1997. Now, here's a little cool fact about these guys. In 96, they opened for Oasis and were invited back for an encore after playing their initial set. How often does that happen? The like opening never. Game? Wow. Yeah. Hold on. It gets better. And they were paid double by the concert promoter for doing that. And when then, does that well, ever happen? Dang. And then the brothers came and beat the crap out of him. <laughs> Probably. It yeah, took the money. <laughs> uh, of course, their two big uh, hits were uh, Semi-Charmed Life and Jumper. I actually saw this band. I can't remember. It was, it was back in the late, oh, early 2000s, I think. I saw them down at Metropole. Um, so January. That's a, that's a really... Uh... It was a very cool song, uh -huh. and it's like really when somebody says, you know, all right, to hum a ninety song real quick. It's Boom, not, you it know, is. at least fifty percent of the people to maybe seventy five mm -hmm. are gonna go do 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 do. Yep. Often exactly. played with cover bands. Mm -hmm. Often. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> this kind of cracked me up. Well, not this ping, but the, you'll see what I mean. Wow. Uh, January twenty six, two thousand. They fired guitarist Kevin uh, Cadigan. Uh, Cadigan then filed suit against them, citing wrongful termination, adding his production, recording, and songwriting royalties had been withheld. Oh, my. Mm. Yes, yes. Now, they settled out of court 2002. All right. Now, hold on. Hold on. Let's do it again. <laughs> Guitarist Tony Freddy, Freddy Nelly. Yeah, I'm Irish. I can't pronounce these. It's Italian, bro. It is. No, but I'm Irish. I can't hear you. Uh, Freddie and Allie was fired. He was fired in 2010. Said, what did he do? He sued him for being denied songwriting and credit. <laughs> songwriting uh, and credit and benefits. Uh, he got $438,000 in 2013. So there you go. Wow. You're going to fire me. Guess what? Uh, hello, Attorney Edgar Schneider. Yeah, that was Freddie and Ellie. Edgar Schneider hurt. and Associates. Freddie and Ellie. Thank you. Thank you, Lily. <laughs> <laughs> He'll get money for me, but uh, they are—they are still at it all. You know, um, their seventh album, "Our Band Apart." How appropriate! How about that, yeah, it's to be released September of two thousand twenty-one. So they're still I, I bet there. that some of those uh, albums by some of these bands that like you don't know. I bet they have some good material on there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they may not all be big hits, but, you know, it's just it's just not going to it's not going to get a fair shake yeah. in the sort of music well, it's a whole climate. different yeah. world today. Yeah. Musically, you know, so. I, I there was an interesting article I read in Rolling Stone magazine um, I don't know, about a year, maybe a year, year and a half it was before the like maybe back in 2019 where she said that uh, I'm, I'm not releasing any more albums. Who did? She, Cheryl Crow. Oh, Cheryl she's Crow. like, this yeah. doesn't make any sense. She's like, when there's an opportunity for me to release a song for something, I'll, you know, I'll be putting out, yeah. I'm still writing music and everything, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. that's just kind of silly to be putting out albums. She doesn't need that telecaster anymore. Then she could you know, <laughs> send my pass that along. Yeah. yeah. I'll take um, real good care of it. What do the songs 
yeah. Banditos, yeah. and the theme song to the television show, the hugely successful television show, King of the Hill, have in common? Uh, it's written by the same people or yes, something? Yes, it... <laughs> <laughs> if this uh, was both uh, uh, songs are done by the refreshments, not the replacements. No, replacements are an amazing band. Love the replacements. That's not this. The refreshments, not to be confused with the replacements, not to be mm-hmm. considered con- confused with the replacement refreshments. Oh, yeah. that's what they. Well, if they break up, you get back just together. Broke my right. whole brain. They could you be okay? the replacement refreshments, or they could tour together. <laughs> Well, they, oh, oh my God. Yeah. Yes. People would not know which band was what. Mm-hmm. They'd be like, huh? Wait, which are you? Poor weed. Um, <laughs> so these guys are from, now, now there aren't a lot of bands from this, from, from this place. They're from Tempe, Arizona. Mm. Wow. There aren't a lot of bands from Tempe, Arizona. Wow. They come out wow. and, and do something cool. Uh, their break, breakthrough album was Fizzy, Fuzzy, Big and Buzzy. I'll Not bet. to be considered with meaty, beady, big, and bouncy the way the Who. <laughs> also, Yahoo's for Triangles, mm-hmm. the theme song uh, to the long-running animated King of the Hill. So that's what that was called. Mm-hmm. Uh, the latter was a piece that the band traditionally performed at sound checks. Uh, the refreshments disbanded in '98. Although Roger Klein and P.H. Nafa uh, continued to tour and play refreshment songs along with new music as Roger Klein and the Peacemakers. Um, Roger is, uh, you know, I got the impression that he was just kind of like too big for that band. Like he was just had to kind of front like as his own name. Um, I remember when uh, when I found out they weren't going to do another record, I was uh, bummed out. Um, But um, they're just there. That's pretty much it. There is no you're not they're not going to go on a tour. You might see Roger Klein. Um, and the Peacemakers, you know, going out, and they will, I'm sure they'll play Banditos and a couple mm-hmm. songs. But I need to tell you guys um, about this album that they put out. It's a funny title, right? Yes. It's a, it is a, you know, it's a I kind of, kind of cutesy. I can't stop I'm laughing. Over here I want me, crazy. I have some of them there French yeah, fried potatoes and some of that there mustard my sauce. Eyes. My nose is running from laughing so hard. <laughs> Go ahead, I'm sorry. Um, but they put they put this album out, and um, you need to listen to it. Fizzy, fuzzy, big, and buzzy. This is one of those records that we have talked. We've talked about records like this. We've never talked about this specific album. Um, this album has no bad songs. It's is one of those records you don't have to skip any tracks. Um, there are songs that are like hilarious, like mm-hmm. the, 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 you know, this, this Klein is a, he's a, he's a really good songwriter and songs that are really kind of heartbreaking and touching and some that kind of like do both. Um, it, it's just great songwriting and, um, the guitar work on the, on the album is stellar. It's the, um, uh, I'm trying to see here. Drums, bass, uh, bass guitar, drums. Uh. Lead guitar, uh, Brian David Blush. That's his name. And uh, really, really hot guitar player. Very, very, very hot. If you like good guitar work, great songwriting, I highly recommend that you check the album out. Although, you'll never get to see him live. Oh. Poop. Poop. <laughs> wow. You all right? Really? Oh, my. Now he's dead. Oh, I hate when that happens. He died. <laughs> he was terrible. Hey, right on the pole. He's so can. sad. He's so young. <laughs> Sorry. Is somebody going to say something? Something. Or are we going to... In gonna, the way gonna, she gonna... moves. <laughs> Look, just how far down are we going to go? <laughs> we could talk it out over a cup of joe. You can look into my eyes. Here we like go. A supermodel. There it is. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so show your ID card to the border guard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> your alias says you're Captain John Luc Picard, Picard from the United, United Federation, Federation of, of Planets. Planets. <laughs> but they don't speak English anyways. No. <laughs> great mm-hmm. lyrics. If you yes. like if you like some great, you I know, that's a great lyric. Song. Yeah. That's a yeah. Song to play. Well, if you like that, like the whole album is like full yeah. songs like that that it go, oh, cool. What do you got, Lilith? Hey, do we want to check and see if people are saying anything? They're not. <laughs> what? I just checked. 
What? Bill Damiano can't even stick with us. He's got stuff to do. Oh, Bill. No. I am. Um, I, th- I think that no. um, here's here's what happened. And I will tell you guys, just with all the craziness, I am going to be presenting at Rock and Pod um, on Saturday. Uh, and um, just getting everything together for all of that, everything dealing going on with um, – my brick and mortar business and the <laughs> fire damage and all that stuff. This you sell a, bricks and mortar? I sell bricks Hell, and mortar. Hell, I didn't mortar. know that. <laughs> I didn't even know. <laughs> so we have a lot going. So I have a lot going on, and um, so I did not post any events, and that's probably why people. No, don't well, there know. are people watching, just not people talking. Okay, that's cool. We like yeah. to be watched. <laughs> <laughs> we all know Kevin does. I like that a lot. You know, Lou, there's a great view from your bathroom window to his living room, so you can watch what? it. All Shut day. up, Lily. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because it goes both ways, I'm just saying. I'll bet it does. <laughs> hey, now. Hey, now. Yeah, I like when I'm coming up the hill and uh, I can see Stu sitting down on the shitter. <laughs> Is it the shadow or is it him? The silhouette? It's kind of like that scene in um, The Thing. <laughs> you know, it's like where it's the shadow yeah. and the guy gets yeah. up and does that and, you know, yeah. then it cuts off. It's, yeah. it's kind of like that. Yeah. That's all I think about is the thing. Like the things that Yikes. come up out of the toilet. And... <laughs> My gosh. Wasn't, wasn't there a horror movie from the 80s where monsters came out of the toilet and ate yes. your ass? Wasn't what? the munchies? <laughs> Hold on, I, I like think it. it was Ghoulies. Or Ghoulies. It might have been Ghoulies. Because I remember the, the that, that was the poster. That's an wasn't actual it? thing. The They'll get you in the end. end. Yo. <laughs> wow. That well, was I have no line. service Touchy. in here for, that was, for some reason. That was the tagline for Fine the uh, line between stupid and brilliant. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It I watched that when I was a kid and it yeah. scared the crap out of me. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're on the Muppet Show. <laughs> we kind of are. <laughs> this isn't it. This isn't the Muppet Show. No, it we should commission is. Uh, that uh, Jim Henson guy who can't do the voices right to do Muppets of us. <laughs> but we'll do our own voices. Munchies, we definitely need... look. Munchies was a thing. <laughs> is it the toilet? It's not the toilet. Yeah, no. Munchies Ghoulies. is a kind of it's Ghoulies meets Gremlins. It's like yeah, that's okay. one of those knockoff movies. Okay, so Lily, are you going to talk about a, a uh, band? Yeah, okay, so does anybody remember the band Not A Surf? Oh, yeah. Okay. Ooh. What was the song that they did? Popular. Yeah. It's called Popular. Yeah. And I thought maybe I was the only what person. What was the popular yeah, song yeah, yeah, they yeah. did? Popular. Popular. <laughs> um, uh, Not A Surf was formed in 1992 by Matthew Cos and Daniel Lorca. They originally went by the name Helicopter, Ooh. and this is real stonery, but later changed it to Not A Surf, which Cos said is actually referring to something much more existential, mm-hmm. just surfing on nothing. Being lost in your head or in your imagination, but you know, whenever I listen to music, I always find myself off somewhere, somewhere in space, you know, in mental space, and it's a reference to that. So he wasn't wow. smoking anything, no. of no, course. No, no, no. Um, I remember I would wait on MTV or VH1 or whichever one played their music video, so I could watch this video because I loved the song. I was obsessed with it. For someone who doesn't like '90s music, this is one of the ones I liked. Um, they, uh, Southern California's, uh, this is not even the one thing I was looking for. Sorry, I had it, and it's gone now. Oh, I hate that. It's there. <laughs> I had it once. And I um, if Hel- it. Okay. Helmet is, like, one of the other bands that are on the list that I was looking up, but. Oh, yeah. Um, Unsung. That's a kick-ass mm. riff. I like that song. Unsung. Yeah. <laughs> not a Surfer is the, likely the group with the biggest hit. Uh, on this list, popular was a post grunge tune that some would argue uh, delved into novelty territory, but it completely and totally dominated MTV. Okay, MTV in 1996. Oh, Reg- happy birthday, by the way. Oh, yeah, 40 years. Right? Regardless Darn. of your take on the song, uh, we love it. A few 90s fans could have uh, foreseen that they would be around for eight more full lengths and have had an extremely ardent fan base. And they're actually um, getting ready to tour again, apparently. Mm. Um, let me pull that up now. It's a place for quiet. I want to go ahead. Keep talking. It's okay. <laughs> not a surf open the new decade with a single release. So much love on January 8th, the third from never not together. Um, it's garnered. It garnered Rolling Stone's attention who reviewed the single favorably, surprisingly, because mm-hmm. we know Rolling Stone likes nothing. Yes. Um, Double J in Australia added it and uh, the previous single, Something I Should Do, to their playlist. On ni- uh, January 9th, uh, oh my gosh, 15th, Not A Surf began their Never Not Together world tour at Neptune Theater in Seattle. So they are going to be 
Yes, that's it. Attempting to tour in 2021. So that would be great. Wow. So they're still prominent, too. I really thought that that huh. was gone. And yeah. I had no idea that they had eight albums. <laughs> Jeez, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, and that's the thing that, that's with some of these bands is that, um, yeah, they had that one song. But a lot of people don't realize that these bands have had, like, like a kind of a core following mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. followed them since the beginning and buy every record that they buy. And so, right, right. so they, so, so they had a little breakout. They probably looked at this as a kind of like bonus in their career. And now they just went back to just doing what they were doing anyways, yeah, exactly. which is, you know, playing the music that they, that they wanted to play. And that is not in that uncommon of a thing. Um, it's just that those bands typically people, because they don't stay famous, um, you know, putting out hit after hit. They're not, um, uh, train or Stone Temple Pilots or one of these, you know, mm-hmm. you tend to think, oh, those guys, they didn't really do anything. When the whole time they're laughing all the way to the bank. Well, because, if truly you know, they're grunge. They don't care if they yeah. have fans anyway. Right. So, <laughs> well, right. they're post grunge. Post grunge. They definitely sound nineties. Yeah, oh, yeah, they definitely, they they definitely have that um, th- for sure. So, what do you got, Kevin? You got another one? <laughs> Yeah, I do. You do. No, that's it's scary when he laughs like that. No, I'm it. sorry. So uh, my uh, my next one is Harvey Danger. Remember Harvey Danger, everybody? I do. Sure, sure. Obsessed. Um, they were formed in 1992 in Seattle, Washington, and then they broke up. <laughs> that's why I was laughing. That's why I was laughing. I have, I have a little bit more. Wow. Wow. Of course, their big hit was 1997's Flagpole Sitter. Um, and, uh, the band was formed by, uh, two students, uh, they were student journalists, Jeff Lynn, no, not that Jeff Lynn, and, uh, Aaron Huffman. Uh, the name <gasps> came from a graffitied phrase on the newspaper office's wall where they worked. And I wanted to see what, I tried to find the phrase, but I couldn't find the phrase. So, it's okay. Anyway. Uh, so they played quite a bit there. Uh, now they played a final show on April 21st, 2001. So long. Yeah, yeah. They then played again <laughs> April 21st, 2004. And by the end of the year, they had a new EP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was so much for their final show. Uh, however, like though, this. on May 28th, 2009, they announced that they were officially ending. I thought it would be very up. cool to see them actually play their last show April 21st, 2009. That would have been very cool. But I, there was no word on when the last show was. Yeah, um, I, I think I think a good p- podcast topic at some point would be bands that said that they were quitting, but then immediately like did, <laughs> did right the next yeah. thing. <clears throat> and that, there's a whole thing, including including the band, because right. they made the last waltz. There's the last a giant waltz. movie. All these famous people come. Oh, Goodbye. the band. We had, See you, you, later. you know the whole thing. Adios. And then like a year later, put out another record. Oh, yeah, by the and way. toured. Robbie Robertson was never in the band again, but they were. Uh, they continued like, oh, oh right. man, it's like, really? They have no shame. Right. So something interesting. Yeah. We have all Bills watching who are commenting now. Bill, Whoa! Bill, 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 Bill Damiano. Bill, 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 Bill. Van Horn says mm-hmm. he likes hearing about these albums and bands. Nice. Bill Thomas said, I guess only Bills are watching. Billy T. <laughs> Many the Bill watching. Well, that, that uh, meme I sent you guys yesterday. Yes. Yeah. That was a Billy Thomas. Uh, of course it was. And I think because I Billy is it. on with us right now, I'm going to go ahead and read his yep. meme because, uh-huh. Here we go. you know, so this is just for you guys. <clears throat> Let me clear my throat. Let me yeah. get ready for this. Deep breath. I want to tell you about a girl who only eats plants. You've probably never heard of her before. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I can't even Thank stand you. you. <laughs> Somebody uh, stop him. I know. We're having entirely too much fun on this uh, mm-hmm. circus thing. Mm-hmm. Right, do you have any others, Lily? Oh, you want me to read more? No, I'm just asking if there's any ones you really... Because you had a whole pay- page. You could talk well, about... Well, I don't talk, want to talk about those. If you no, you can talk about time. it. You're, you're right, among friends. Fine. <laughs> I, who out there wants to hear one of Lily's that she picked wasn't from the 90s? Hi, my name's Bill, and I want to hear it. Well, Let's just hear one of yours. Because <laughs> I'm going to finish with one short one, and then we're going to do... What does it make sense uh, for me to read it now? No, read it. Read it. You went through all the trouble. I'll but I can it. always have this in my playlist. Your repertoire? <laughs> so I was going to talk about Anvil, 
because I haven't <gasps> heard from them since they did okay. the documentary, right? right? Well, that movie came out. Did when that movie came out? It came out in two thousand. Two thousand eight. Okay. A uh, Canadian heavy heavy metal band from Toronto, Ontario, formed in nineteen seventy eight. Currently consists of founding members Steve Lips Kudlow, Rob Reiner, Chris Robertson, blah blah blah. As of twenty twenty one, the band has released eighteen studio albums wow. and has been cited as having influenced many notable heavy metal groups, including Megadeth, Slayer, Anthrax, and Metallica. Um, the band, in particular, Kudlow and Reiner, were subject to the two thousand eight documentary film Anvil, the story, the story of Anvil, directed by mm-hmm. screenwriter and formal Anvil roadie Sacha Gervasi. Uh, which is actually why I wanted to talk about this tonight because I haven't heard anything since the documentary because it was such a blow up and it was on TV everywhere and you know right they, for a they long had a hot time. minute yeah yeah um, they had their fifteen minutes as right. they would say right? <laughs> upon its release the film garnered critical acclaim for from many major publications and has since brought the band uh, renewed recognition including opening slots with ACDC and Saxon. Appearances at major heavy metal festivals including Download Loud Park and Hellfest and independent music festivals like Bumbershoot and S. S X S W. South by um, Southwest. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure. Um, re- reviewers have described Anvil as a pioneering heavy metal band that was popular in the 1980s, but then faded into obscurity in the 1990s while refusing to stop playing, recording, and gigging. Um, so they were faded for a long time, and people thought they were a joke. People thought they were Spinal Tap, mm-hmm. sort of like a parody type band. Mm-hmm. Um, after the documentary, though, they they really blew up. Um, and they were on The Tonight Show with Conan O'Brien on October 6, 2009, which was the first network television appearance of their career. Oh, that's cool. Good uh, for to, them. To coincide with the release of the documentary in North America. And they also played Metal on Metal during the show. Cool. Metal on Metal. Um, in May 2013, uh, it saw the release of Hope and Hell, a new Anvil studio, studio recording against, per, again, Hope produced, and Hell. I like Hope it. and Hell. Uh, recording, again, produced by Bob Marlett. And 2014, Anvil parted ways with Sal Italiano and replaced him with Chris Robertson, who was already acting as the band's rehearsal bassist. Mm-hmm. Bassist. And member it's of just the a bass player. Like, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. But the album Anvil is Anvil was released on February 26, 2016. The band's 17th album, Pounding the Pavement, was released on January 19, 2018. The band's 18th album. Uh, Legal at Last was re- released on February 14, 2020. So they are still doing stuff. And they have stuff. 18 albums. They're not a joke. No. no. <laughs> 18 no. studio albums, anybody... <clears throat> live stuff, the documentary. Um... I mean, anybody who puts out 18 albums worth of music has got my freaking respect. <laughs> Before they were called Anvil, they were called Lips, which is the you know guitarist yeah. and lead vocalist nickname. But after that, they uh, changed it. But I, they're still doing stuff. It's and saying, I didn't realize that. I thought that the movie was very touching, mm-hmm. you know, about it's these good. guys and, and trying the to, and their and friendship love, and yeah. everything. Yeah, I thought that it was, I thought that was the part about it that was really, really, uh, uh, you know, like moving. And it really got me. I'm sitting here <clears> thinking <throat> of some of the titles of their songs. And I'm not going to repeat. <laughs> Folks, probably shouldn't. Go look them up. But it's, wow. I can see why people didn't take them seriously. Uh, if you're Much using like if you're using a marital aid <laughs> on stage with your guitar, I mean, there's yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but they were very Jimmy 80s. Page used a violin bow. I can see that, but mm. but uh, yeah, yeah. But I think they're still out there. I know. Uh, back in 2017, I saw a uh, an ad in the back of a, a rock magazine where they were touring Europe. So they were still out there. Yeah, I'm hoping uh, with uh, since they did an album last year that they do another one this year, and maybe they'll tour with it. Mm-hmm. As long as I would go see them, dude. We all should go see mm-hmm. them. Like, it should be like I a Ludini Circus them. field trip. Oh, nice! And we should get an Uber. Oh, oh definitely. <laughs> Yeah, you're definitely on an Uber after that. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna, we're gonna. I want to talk about just one last band real quick. This is a band that you know we all discover music, you know in certain ways you know there's certain things that like lily's talked about you know hearing her you know her parents albums and kevin's talked about you know kind of like getting into christian being interested in christian music and then finding out that these artists like these other bands influenced yeah by yeah so so things like that and um one of the ways you can become aware of, of music that you don't know about is by being in a band and being asked to play 
songs that you by artists you don't know. And this was the case with this band, and I became a giant fan, and I bought all their albums. I've never seen them live, but I would love to. Uh, this is a band called Dada, or Dada. Oh, and it's a three-piece rock band, so Southern California, of course. The band is made up of Michael Gurley, who's a guitarist and co-lead vocals, with Joey uh, K- uh, Calio, bass and co-lead vocals, and Phil Levitt on drums. So basically, they are a uh, trio, released their debut album puzzle the they had a single on a MT, uh, big video on mtv called disneyland uh quickly became staple of radio across the u.s and australia where the song and album went on high rotation <clears throat> uh reached number two on the billboard heat seekers chart number five on the modern rock chart 27 on the mainstream rock chart puzzle went on to sell more than half a million copies and earned an riaa gold record award dada toured for the album with such bands as crowded house izzy Stradlin, and the juju hounds as well as sting yes nice. and i i do know that a couple of buddies of mine had seen them with seen them with sting said so it was absolutely fantastic absolutely. um during several of their tours in the 90s daughter performed with occasional guilt McKeel, who played rhythm guitar for the past years, however, Dada has returned to being a uh, power state power trio. Uh, followed up with American Highway Flower, which is a, both P- uh, Puzzle and American Highway, Highway Flower. I tell you right now, are uh, great albums. You don't have to skip any songs; they're just really well done. Um, they had uh, one single that spent a few weeks on the modern rock charts, uh, but IRS Records began began to collapse began to collapse at that time. So this is a thing that happens to bands sometimes. They're still putting out music and stuff, but they've got record label issues. <sighs> you know, so they uh, after touring a lot in '99, the band decided to take a break. They took a, they did their last show in Norfolk, Virginia, in front of 14,000 fans during the break. Uh, Joey uh, Calia worked as an A and R scout for MCA Records. Interesting, interesting. O three saw the return of Dada. Uh, they began playing live shows again. Uh, released a sh- released released a show on on uh, CD. Um, spent several weeks touring that CD. O four released their fifth album, How to Be Found. Um, it was technically it was not a new album, but merely a compilation album that gathered all the leftover songs from the highly productive um, uh, sessions from uh, previous albums. Um, during much of the band's tenure, you, Kevin, you'll find this interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michael Gurley struggled with carpal tunnel syndrome. Mm. In order to continue playing, Gurley was forced to take uh, some uh, to make some changes. These included using light gauge strings mm-hmm. and tuning the instrument down a half a step, as well as icing his wrist frequent, frequently to help with the pain. I remember him talking about this in Guitar Player Magazine, and because he is such a wonderful guitar player, he has a very unique sound and a very unique style and he, he just really just just can tear it up on the guitar <clears throat> but they had to take many breaks and stuff like that because of his uh, um uh, his carpal tunnel uh, problems. Um, they released a f- an EP with a funny title called A Friend of Pat Robertson uh, <laughs> in 2006. Um, uh, Joey did his, uh, did release some solo, solo music in 11. Um, they had some studio time booked. Um, they put a new album together under the name Seven Horse. Um, the debut album Let the Seven Horse Run was independently re- released in uh, 2011 and the tour was followed in early 2012. In 2013, Martin Scorsese featured the Seven Horse song Meth Lab Zozo sticker in his movie The Wolf of Wall Street. Nice. Oh. So they have become a different band name, which uh, I lost track of these guys and I did not realize this. Uh, they toured as opening for Kenny Wayne Shepherd as well as Whiskey Myers. Um, so they're out, they've, they've been out there and doing, and doing some stuff. Um, they uh, did a 20th anniversary tour in 2012, and in February 17, they embarked on a 25th anniversary tour of the United States. So that's the latest information we have on them. So there's no official, hey, we broke up. Nobody has passed away. So uh, given the certain climate of things, if you probably went to their website, you might find that they could be on tour. Hmm. Interesting. Somebody might want to check that out real quick. But anyways, guys, that's it <laughs> um, You know, uh, for today on on this subject here. Um, 
Good show, Lily. Good show. Every day, yo. Every day. Yeah, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm looking Lou, at uh, it. Mentioned, you mentioned earlier it's MTV's 40th anniversary, and I'd like to thank MTV for 14 years of wonderful music. <laughs> Guess what? The video is older than me. <laughs> oh, my. By about six months. <laughs> oh, my. That's because you took your time. Well. Getting here. That's because <laughs> mom decided to do Wait that when she did that. Well, that's all right. It's <laughs> worth the wait, Lily. You were worth the wait. I bet. <laughs> Happy birthday to Lee Rocker, born this day in 1961 from the Stray Cats, also from the band Phantom Rocker and Slick. Happy birthday to my man, the man who... You know, won't punch Dave Mustaine in the face, even though sometimes he deserves it. James Hetfield <laughs> yeah. uh, was born this day in 1963. I'm, I have nothing against Dave Mustaine. I'm just talking out my ass. Yeah. I'm just trying to be entertaining. We love you, Dave. If you're listening. We love you, Dave. Dave. Yeah. So Dada is very uh, active on Twitter. Oh, look at that. Um, the last thing they posted, well, it's been a year, but they, uh, they're so active, <laughs> but there's, I they mean, were. Twitter, there's yeah. tons of things on Twitter for them. Um, they don't have any tour dates coming up or anything, but they said on October 29th of 2020 reunion. Hmm. So maybe, maybe something's in the works. 2020 or 2021? 2020 is when they said oh, it. That's when they said it. But okay. I mean, COVID. So there's yeah. that. <laughs> um, on this day in 1985, Drive by the Cars was re-released following its dramatic use on TV during the Live Aid concert. All the royalties from the record went to the Band Aid Trust. Hmm. Interesting, right? Wow. Um, do you know the song Shout? I love that song. Mm-hmm. Started a three-week run at number one on the U.S. Singles Chart on this day in 1985. He looks like John Cryer. Yeah. 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 I got that. I get, I get that. I get that. Oh, Lily, right? This is your record, right? 87, this yes! day. Uh, uh, Hysteria by Def Leppard oh. was released. Yes. When? 1987? Yep. I was five. <laughs> so you don't remember when it came out? Hell no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I probably heard it like about four years ago. On this day, this, is, this <laughs> is a little bit of interesting rock trivia. On this day in 91, Metallica held a playback party to launch their self-titled album at Madison Square Garden in New York City. Kurt Cobain and Chris Novoselic from Nirvana were both in the That's attendance. cool. Wow. I'm surprised, wow. but that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, some of the, you know, some of these people that you think, you know, wouldn't get along or don't like each other. Mm-hmm. It, 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 that's not true at all. They do I different, they do different like, things, but they, you know. I just kind of feel like that's not Kurt Cobain's music. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe it knows? is. Maybe, maybe it yeah. was. Maybe it he probably been. liked a lot of different kind of music, mm-hmm. you know, for sure. He said, he said one of his heroes was Cheap Trick. Legit. Mm-hmm. Nirvana doesn't really sound much like Cheap Trick. No, no. <laughs> no. Anyways, guys, you've been listening to Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Um, go to Ludini Rock and Roll Circus dot com. Also, check. Come and meet me in person uh, uh, on Saturday in Nashville, Tennessee, at the Rock and Pod Expo. Nashville Rock and Pod Expo dot com to get all the information. It's going to be a lot of uh, cool celebrities. Uh, uh, hanging out there, including Ludini himself. Um, uh, get some. Uh, get on our uh, um, fan list, uh, our community at uh, lulombardimusic dot com, and get some free downloads and things like that. Um, don't forget one more time, wolfscustoms dot online dot online. Check them out. Rockrageradio dot com. Download the app, Lily V Six. Uh, you want to get a little share something before we? Sure. Uh, you can listen to my show, Hot Licks with Lily Six, Thursdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Time on Rock Rage Radio. Rock Rage. <laughs> Download the app for free or go to rockrageradio.com. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it is Rock for Life weekend, so mm-hmm. come out to Island Park if you want to see some live music. There you go. And Pittsburgh, Kevin, anything yeah, you'd I've like got to a add? Fun filled. Listen to this, Lou. I got a fun filled couple of days coming up, Lou. Lou, you know what I'm going to be doing? What? Nothing. M- uh- no, I got something very important to do. I'm going to be checking on my neighbor's cat. Wow. I'm going to be checking on my neighbor's cat, making sure that cat's happy and sassy. Happy and She's always uh, happy and sassy. That's true. All right, guys, have a great week, and we'll catch you all on the next Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. See you.